Well, good morning and welcome to the Morning Update Show. I'm your boy, Marcus Harrison Green, filling in real quick today for Amari Salisbury, who was taking a wonderful, much deserved vacation. My co host, Trey, will soon be joining me, but we're going to kick off today by starting with yesterday's press conference by Mayor Jenny Durkin and Carmen Best. They basically explained that the East Precinct, known now as uh, the CHOP, CHOP, Capitol Hill organized protest zone will eventually get back into the hands of the police. Uh, they did not give a timetable or a plan exactly of when that may or may not be. So it's anyone's guess. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Durkin also talked about giving money and funds and, and resources in a updated budget um, to uh, the black community. You know, again, not too many details were known about that, but we shall see exactly what happens when she drops it this uh, upcoming week. Mayor Best, excuse me, Police Chief Best, not Mayor, Police Chief Best also talked a little bit at the press conference about tear gas and how she believed that if tear gas had been used, potentially, uh, if tear gas was allowed to be used, I should say, that potentially uh, some of the, the violence that has happened in CHOP wouldn't have happened. Now, Many people, many critics, I've seen it on Twitter, seen it on, on Facebook, have uh, have been kind of been like, hey, what in the world is going on with that? Why, why would you say something like that that's sort of unfounded and unproven? And well, all I can say is I don't know. All that being said, uh, we are going to take a quick break as my co-host is here, and we will be right back. So, oh. <laughs> so I, I guess we, we are will not take that quick break for for a couple more seconds, <laughs> but hey, it's live streaming, folks. It's live streaming. We are now taking the break right now. Thank you. I'm a young black man doing all that I can to stay. When I look around and I see what's being done to my kind every day, I'm being hunted to this prey. My people don't want no trouble. We've had enough struggle. I just want to live. God protect me. I just want to live, I just want to live. All right, welcome back to the Morning Update Show. It's your boy, Marcus Harrison Green. I am joined by my wonderful co-host, AK. AK, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. The, the sun is bright, and uh, so is my personality, I guess. Yeah. But anyhow, <laughs> so I want to move on to our next story. It was written in the, in the Emerald, dropped in the Emerald this morning, uh, which I am happen to be the publisher of such a fine publication. But it was about how some millennials are reconsidering having children in light mm -hmm. of the chaos that is swirling around this world. And so I want to pose to to you: is that is is that an issue that? you know, has, has been fairly, fairly prevalent in, in, you know, in your friend group, in, in your friend circle. Yeah, well, I'm actually a Gen Z. I'm a Zoomer. Okay. Um, so I'm 23, um, and I feel like most of my friends don't plan on having kids. I mean, one part of that could be because we're in our early 20s, right. um, but I think a big part of it is just, like, who wants to bring a kid into the world with chaos and things are expensive? Like, I look at my projected time to pay off my student loan debt, and it's not until I am 30, you know. Right. I, no, I and I, I I completely agree. I'm 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 closer to 40 than 30 at this point, and I you know I have made the deliberate decision to not have kids in the best of times. So I can't imagine having them in the worst. That being said, I I do gotta ask, like, you know, because a, a good friend of mine brought this up after he read the article. He was like, when has there ever been a good time for Black folks to have children in the United States? Yeah, that's right. That's true. It's like you. Go from 16, 19 to, let's say, 18, 63, you know, emancipation. No, after that, mm -hmm. not so much. 1960s, 
70s, ah, not so much. I mean, it's right. if we had been waiting, right, for a good time to have children, like, we would have gone extinct as a race at this particular point. So right. <laughs> I, I guess can you also see the, the, the counter argument of people who are like, we might as well just have them because, you know, you, you never know, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's also the perspective of, like, choice, right? So, like, never – has there been a point in time in history where people have had so much autonomy and being able to choose when they want to have children because of advancements in science and other things um and also never in a time in history have this many women um and you know for folks who give birth been able to work and have such advancements in their career and so i think it's a balancing act because even i think like you know if i want to go get my phd you know and that's different from any other time is that fluidity and having choice in how you want to live your life and what type of career moves you want to make. Exactly, exactly. I will, I, I, I echo that. I, I do want to ask you, though, too, is there is there also, I mean, we talk about this life and all the chaos that might ensue. Right. But, you know, we're standing right here in the, the middle of a chop. There's, you know, all kinds of calls for change, all kinds of, you know, energy around making this world a better place right now. Right. I mean, do you also think that maybe there is hope for a better world and so that we are bringing, so any children that, that we could potentially have in the future are being, would be brought up in a better, more, you know, prosperous world, if you will? Yeah, I think every generation gets better than the next generation. And I hope people keep having children, you know, not anytime soon, but I do <laughs> plan to eventually one day have kids. I'm not one of those people who is necessarily against having children. That is one of my, you know, goals later <laughs> in life. Um, but I do think, I think people forget that, like, you know, each generation becomes less racist, becomes less homophobic, becomes less of whatever the ails of the I world so is. We hope, we're yes. all, you know, <laughs> hopefully we're all working towards becoming a more flexible and kind and generous society generation after generation um so you know a lot of people might be having kids you know we might not have huge generations but people are going to keep having children right like, I, i'm assured of that <laughs> right and and all we can do right is hope that they are better than the the preceding generation if you absolutely so, yeah <laughs> all right well hey we are going to take a, another quick break and we will be right back so thank you very much I'm a young black man Doing all that I can To stay Oh, but when I look around And I see what's being done to my kind Every day I'm being hard to this prey My people don't want no trouble We've had enough strong goals I just want to live, God protect me, I just want to live, I just want to live. Good morning, you're watching the Morning Update Show, I am one of your co-hosts, Acacia Ayana, and jumping back in, I have Marcus with me from Seattle Emerald. Yes, yes. Good to, good to be here today to, to try to, to try to fill in for Amari. I know those are I extremely huge shoes. The man wears with a size 14. I'm nine and a half, so <laughs> we're trying our best, though. But uh, we are moving on to a story about Momiji. It's a restaurant that is just uh, about a block and a half away from yeah, where we are Yeah, just around the corner. Yeah, right here. And yesterday, it, it blew up all over on social media. Right. Uh, their general manager uh, of the establishment accosted a, a black woman outside, called her the N-word, and then some folks came to her defense. They mm -hmm. lit the GM up like a Las Vegas Christmas tree. And, <laughs> and that video also made its way through social media, obviously. Um, in the, the hours that followed, the owner of M Mamiji, uh, Stephen Hahn, he issued a video on Facebook uh, saying that he apologized for what happened, that it was an extremely disgusting act. It, cannot be tolerated, should not be tolerated. The GM was uh, later fired, um, and uh, Stephen decided to go ahead and today actually make prepared meals for and offer them 
uh, to uh, the Capitol Hill community and the CHOP organizers. So I, I got to ask you what, do you, what do you, what do you think of all the, these developments here? Um, I think, I mean, what happened was really like horrific. I don't know if you saw the video, but I watched both of them, the before um, when he was calling the racial slurs and then the after when people came. Um, and I think that any time, you know, someone owns a business, someone has a stake in the community, that decisiveness is key. I think it's right. really great to see um, his name Steve Hahn, correct? Mm -hmm. Stephen Hahn. Yeah. Stephen Hahn moved with a very quick, like, this is what we stand for, this is the action we're going to take, and this is how I'm going to be accountable as the person who's, like, over this brand or over this company. Um, and we don't oftentimes get to see companies or businesses be that quick and decisive with where they stand and how they want to proceed. On most entities, right? If this was right. many police departments, it would have been another month or two <laughs> between any action was right. taken. But <laughs> right. No, I mean, it's true. It's even, I think... Something that we could say about this time, you know, regardless of how people feel about CHOP and how people feel about the protest, is that other people who are outside of the range of the protest are feeling the pressure. Yes. They're feeling the moral pressure to do what's right, even when they're not necessarily in the key of the limelight. Right. Um, and I think that's a really amazing consequence, a result of the work that people have been doing over the last month. Yes, and, and I do like the fact that I think this is highlighted as well about that anti-blackness isn't just a, a, a white thing or whatever. It's, right. You know, it, it still I exists in, you know, some communities of color that are, that are non-black. And so yeah. I'm so glad that um, the owner of Mimiji, Stephen Hahn, that, that he brought that up and essentially said, hey, we are going to sit here. We're going to work with community. We're going to ask you what do you need from us and how can we be better? And I would just wish so many other people would show that level of humility. Right. No, absolutely. I think as we're thinking about, you know, we've all inherited a very broken world, very messed up world, and it's going to require us all to do what a lot of people say, the root work, the, the work that's at the core of who we are to change the society we live in and to live in a world that's truly free and liberating for everybody. Right. And, and I know just to, to note as well that uh, Stephen Hahn did, did say that they're going to do um, at, at his the, I th believe he owns three different restaurants. Yeah. They're going to do anti-bias and anti-racist training as well. So hopefully some, you know, some good can come out of this. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to go ahead and go to another break. And when we come back, Marcus here will be interviewing um, some of the families that were impacted by the violence this weekend. So stay tuned. We'll be back shortly. I'm a young black man Doing all that I can To stand Oh, but when I look around And I see what's being done to my kind Every day I'm being hunted as prey My people don't want no trouble We've had enough strong goals I just want to live, God protect me, I just want to live, I just want to live. <laughs> Welcome back to the morning. Okay, hold on, we're getting there. Hi, y'all. Welcome back to the Morning Update Show. Your host, Trey Holiday here, here with my guy, Marcus. I know Acacia was in earlier. Uh, you guys were talking about, you know, the family structure, setting things up. I know today is a bit of a somber episode for us as we kind of get into some information here and really dive in and talk with Lorenzo's family. Yes, and I mean, it, it comes obviously in the wake of you know, some violence that, that had transpired this weekend. Um, just this morning, there was another shooting um, around in the area, and you know, it's it's left a lot of people reeling. I mean, we're reeling as a community, and we're doing all that we can to, to help to, to be out here and, and support folks, and so that's what th we're doing right now today. Yeah, so much of it, I know in the beginning, is really about getting the information out there. So yes. I'm just thankful that we're connected to our community so we can reach out. Yes. You know what I mean? This family is a part of the family that's in the umbrella of the community. Definitely right. a family that we know of. You know what I'm saying? And the crazy part is, yesterday when we were doing our show, I didn't know that. 
I mean, literally, yesterday we were sitting here, and Acacia and I were talking about it very arbitrarily. I didn't realize that. So I'm so thankful that we're able to have them here today and really get their perspective. Yes. And, and also, too, I think some of this, a lot of the time, is about debunking the myths. Right, because there's so much misinformation out there. It's, what's the old saying? That a, a lie gets halfway around the world before yeah. the truth gets his shoes on. Yeah. I mean, now with social media, it's, it's been lapped, you know, twice. Yes. So at this point, yeah, it's great to get it from, you know, from their own mouth and their own perspective. Right. And, and so I'm happy, you know, just uh, while you guys were on, just meeting literally some of his teachers, his support, yes. his family that is here. That's what it's about. So we're going to get right into it. Um, I know we're going to get right in. We want to transition and bring the families in. Do we want to take a break first? Okay. So you guys, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, right after this break, I just I thank Marcus for being here. We're going to get into this discussion with the families. Absolutely. You guys, stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm a young black man Doing all that I can To stand Oh, but when I look around And I see what's being done to my kind Every day I'm being hunted as prey My people don't want no trouble We've had enough strong goals I just want to live, God protect me, I just want to live, I just want to live. I was at the uh, grand opening of the uh, Liberty Bank building and I just saw so many folks there who had um, dreams and aspirations of something like that happening again in our community where once that was the norm we developed we built we created and now to have to say we got to come back and do it again this is just the first time was was inspiring to me i think it also um uh I think Africatown has created a model that others can follow, but I also think that you guys have created, you know, just an energy around the community uh, of folks that uh, are, are now uh, believing that we can, you know, hold on to it. We're not done. You know, it's not over. The game ain't over. Sometimes, you know, when you look at the clock, you know, I'm playing sports, you know, you're down 21 points in the first quarter. You can either start working harder to get back in it, or you can shut it down and say it's over. Well, you guys have let us know that the game's not over. <laughs> Not over. Uh, welcome back to the Morning Update show. Your host, Trey Holiday. And Marcus Harrison Green. <laughs> we're, sorry, you guys. We're making it work today. We wanted to make sure that the family gets a chance to really speak on Lorenzo's behalf. And I know Donita. Donita, thank you so much. This is unbearable to ask you to be here today. But we are, you know, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that we have this that you did want to spread the word and get the truth out there. Lorenzo was your baby. Tell us from your words what you experienced and what happened here. I experienced pain, to be honest. You guys, this is not a game. Take your time. Yeah. This is not a show, you guys. Right. This really is my son. Express yourself, honey. I just want justice, that's all. Just to be honest, I just want justice. Yeah. I want you, every last one of you, medics. I want you mayor. I want you every officer. I want everybody that signed a HIPAA law saying that you are a medic, that you will save a life. I want you to be accountable, accountable about my son. You sat on a corner and you waited for a response and my son could have been alive. I'm an advocate for youth, so I know what you're supposed to do and you didn't do it. And this is not a game, this is not a rally, this is not whatever the hell chop. So there will be justice, and somebody will answer. 
Yes, yes. Thank you, Donita. Thank you, Donita. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know if you want to uh, speak. I know that one of the things that that we saw in some of the recent reports, just trying to get make sense of this and connecting his uh, life and his death to CHOP. And I really wanted to hear from you guys. You guys, she was telling me he wasn't down here like that. Please explain that and help our viewers understand that he wasn't connected to CHOP in that regard. Lorenzo definitely wasn't connected to CHOP in no way. I guess he was just with some friends. And as him being, as, as Lorenzo having a big heart and at the same time uh, having an understanding for his friends, he's always been a protector. So knowing that, he's, that he became a victim is, is really sad to us. And he just, he, just wanted to, he just wanted to help his friends, you know what I'm saying? And he got caught up into something that, that's way out of out of our control and we didn't know that this was going to happen you know so yeah we, we're, we're grieving you know what i'm saying but at the same time we want to get some understanding because his life could have been saved and just 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 senseless killing it's just it didn't make no sense and you're in the chop we all supposed to be protected we're all here for black lives matter and a life to be taken inside is is it's devastating so for those who, who didn't know him, could you, could you just tell us, share a little bit about Lorenzo, the kind of person he was? Lorenzo was a, uh, he loved, he, 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 Lorenzo was a good, great uncle. He loved his, he loved his nephew. Uh, he was, he was determined to always be there for his family. Uh, he is a protector, you know, that's any man, you know what I'm saying? But he definitely loved his family. And at the same time, you know, he just graduated this year, just graduated. Uh, his teachers here, you know, and, and, and uh, he's always he's always been a good a great kid to me. You know, what I'm saying he's he's been he's been wonderful. It's just it's just I'm just sad. I, I you know, you know, I'm not his biological dad, but this is my wife, and I'm talking on her behalf. Yeah. And uh, I just want to make sure justice is served because this didn't have to happen down here like that. You know, and uh, yeah, it's 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 something that we all need to come in terms with and let everybody know. And I want to give a message out to these youngsters out here that, you know, we all know who you are, you know. We just want you guys to at least turn yourself in, you know, because yeah. it's, 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 it's senseless, man. What, what was the purpose of that, you know? But um, Lorenzo's a great guy, you know, always smiling, always upbeat. It was just... You know, he's a, to us. We just we used to tell him, you know, you know, you knew your friends, but you you, you got to learn how to not follow the wrong crowd. Yeah. And this she, is what happened. She was saying that before, you know, that you know, people wondering, oh, was he a gang banger or something like that? She like he wasn't out there like that in those streets. He wasn't gang banging. Just and following, I think that, probably yeah. following the wrong crowd. Yeah. The wrong crowd at the wrong time, and this is the outcome. And he was not out there like that. I, I think it's really important for the viewers to hear that and for the viewers to know and from, to hear from you guys, you know, to, to give us some insight here. Because I think a lot of the time the rationalizations happen very quickly, right? And people assume a lot of things very quickly. Right, right Marcus? I know right. that. And, and the stereotypes, right? Yeah, the yeah. stereotypes. Quickly, right? Yeah, and, 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 and it's good. I'm glad that you guys give us a, a stage to let, let you know what type of guy Lorenzo was. And he's, he was really trying to he was really trying to be a man you know what i'm saying yeah. he was still a he was still a teenager that lost his, it, it, it's crazy you, you know he, he he did everything his mom wanted him to do he graduated trying to he loved basketball all, all, not even that he liked he liked his he liked he liked rapping and he just just a kid just being a kid you know yeah. what i'm saying it was just it's 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 senseless that this happened you know what i'm saying and and what's so what's so what's so crazy about it is like just all kind of support been coming at us and people been sending us video of what happened and we got clear yeah. video like and I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm letting these youngsters know like you guys need to turn yourself in yeah, can you talk a little bit more about that about the community outreach and how yeah. the, the response and, and and how people have been coming to, well, know, to support the family people was coming to his visual um, constantly to support him even his family his whole family been there you know and uh, although although you know they're angry but they're trying to get understanding like what was the purpose of you, you know, hurting our, our, our cousins, our nephew, you know? Yeah. And the uncles, the uncles is so upset. They don't even want to be up here because they're, they're, 
they can't con they, they want to control their anger you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah and which which any family would you know yeah. um my wife she tried her best to speak to you guys but she's it, you know mom's love is deeper yeah. than you we and can it, ever imagine and it was know? only two you know three days ago that's yeah. I, I can't yeah. imagine imagine, yeah. imagine at all I, that's what i said to her off camera i literally said you know, Donita, the fact that you're even here today, it just speaks volumes to her really wanting the truth to be out there. And again, to dispel the myths, right. because a lot of the chatter happens and people pick up on the chatter and they believe the chatter. So I just thank you both. I thank you for staying in her stead. I thank you both for thank being you. here today. Marcus, I thank you too for being here and for speaking to them yesterday and just getting an understanding so that we can understand and know how to bring you guys on because we understand the sensitivity right. of this issue and you look y'all are family to me you know Donita Absolutely. is definitely family right. to me definitely. so I just you know my heart is with you guys I know that we have some other representatives who really want the audience to understand who Lorenzo was and so we're gonna go to a quick break right now and, okay. and hopefully bring on another representative who can share with us you know a great piece Greater, about yes. Lorenzo and yes. I just the swell you guys if you guys actually understood how many people are here on Lorenzo's behalf today you would understand that this young man touched many lives in a very positive way yes. so thank you again for, and for you. coming on today and for staying in Donita's stead and thank her as well for just giving us a little bit of time that she could. We are so appreciative to yes. get the truth out. And continue thank to you. express our, our hopes and, and prayers and, and well wishes to you as well. I appreciate family. it. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, thank you. You guys stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm a young black man doing all that I can to stand Oh, but when I look around And I see what's being done to my kind Every day I'm being hunted as prey My people don't want no trouble We've had enough struggle I just want to live God protect I just want to live, I just want to live. <laughs> Welcome back to the Morning Update Show. I'm your host, Trey Holiday, And I am Marcus Harrison Green. Yes, and right now we actually have a couple of Lorenzo's teachers on who also want to share with us a little bit more about Lorenzo's life. We have Rubio and Berger. Thank you guys so very much for joining us. We know this is a hard time for anyone who uh, loved Lorenzo, uh, obviously, as much as his family. Thank you for being here. Please share with us a little bit about your uh, your life and your time with Lorenzo. Yeah, thank you for having us. I, I definitely... After hearing the news, um, felt compelled to, to, to come down, to, to pay my respects to Lorenzo, to honor his life in some way, because he, what I remember for, from him, his, he was a f full human. You know, he was somebody that, of course, had a lot of challenges, a lot of um, things society have put on him to keep him from being successful, but he fought through a lot of it and his determination to come every day full of life. I mean, he could have come every day because of what's been thrown at him. He could have come every day and been angry or be, and he wasn't. He was a happy kid, full of life. He'd come in in the morning, and Mr. Rubio, what's up? You know, just, just full of that life and zest and wasn't coming in either to just be social. He was serious. He came in to also get his work done. He understood that there was an importance to education for him to the better moment in his life. And he showed it because, yeah, I'm here. I have a connection with these teachers, but I'm here for my future. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Mr. Okay, what's the next thing I got to do? Can yeah. I say that? Okay, what's the next thing? Am I done? Hey, no, I need another thing. I was like, well, I mean, you can take five minutes. No, 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 no. Give me another one, Mr. Give me another one. And I, I, don't got, I don't got time. I got, I got stuff to do. I got, I got to get this done. And so... I, what I saw from him was, you know, we often talk about uh, kids need to have grit. Kids need to have this, like, resilience. But they have it. It's built in them. That's how they've been. That's how they've gotten here. And he showed it 
and and he didn't give up and he he graduated he finished you know it, it's he officially finished and, and and to see all that potential and that love he had for his friends his community his family that he talked about to see it cut short to see it unfulfilled it is it's it's heartbreaking it's 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 a testament to the failure of this system mm-hmm. of the education system that although we work for it we work within it and there's only so much we can do and we need to think about how to his his life his strategy tragedy make me think of how can we reinvent this mm. right reinvent it all yeah yeah to positively impact the lives of of black children yes what, what would that reinvention look like i mean that that is something that you know, we, we've, we've started that process in, in a lot of ways where we work with, you know, bringing in agencies, other agencies to work with children, not just the academics. But then that's not enough. Yeah. That that's, School is only so much. It's only so much part of their life. And it's also what are we teaching them, right? Like it's also what we're when Can we get the appropriate, appropriate curriculum, the appropriate yeah. to teach the whole being and not just math arithmetic and and reading you know or rhythmic reading writing right but like a holistic holistic yeah. holistic yeah. approach with a curriculum that reflects them not culturally just culturally responsive yes. exactly and, and and we say all those words culturally yeah. responsive we say all these buzzwords but i don't think the funding comes the, the money comes to make that happen to actually make that happen and Berger, I know that you had your, you know, time with Lorenzo as well. You know, we want to hear from you as well. You know, what did this tragedy, as soon as you heard this, what were you thinking in terms of, man, Lorenzo, the young kid that I experienced, what were you thinking? Um, <clears throat> God, for me, I bumped into Lorenzo about three or four weeks ago. So the first thing I went to was just seeing him out in front of the Fred Meyer and hugs and smiles and catching up and asking about how he's doing and congratulating him on his diploma and telling him how proud I was of him. So for me, it was just disbelief. It was because I'd just seen him, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, that was, that was it, you know, and then the rest of the day it was just spent crying and <laughs> talking yeah. to everybody. So Obviously. yeah, reflecting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and reflecting. Yeah. yeah. Can you share a story that, that really just epitomizes Lorenzo? Okay, yeah. Um, pretty early on when he came to our school, like he and I were starting to connect and I wanted to make him feel welcome. So it was, it was kind of like, hey, it's time to like start doing some academics. As we spent time just getting to know the students, you know, and, and like whatever. And so I'm like, do you want to read? Do you want to write? And he was like, oh man, I got so much to say. I was like, Psh. Here, this is your composition book, markers, make it your own, just do it. And he, in 30 minutes, I think, had written three pages, single-spaced, wow. just brrr, and he came back the next day, he's like, can I write some more? I'm like, dude, just do it. Wow. Just wrote, 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 and then we sat down and talked about it. And then, like, he, and so that kind of became, like, yeah, our early kind of thing that we did together, so. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. I think that education provides uh, the platform and, and, and the uh, the model to really make it what you will. When you t- take away a lot of the other things and you break it down to just building relationships with mm-hmm. with your students, it feels like that's really the perspective that you guys both came from yep. in terms yep. of really building, getting to know who they are as people yeah. so that you actually can teach them in that kind of holistic way, that holistic approach. It just sounds like both of you guys did that in right. your own right even without the system being there ready for you yeah he um one, one last thing is he also wouldn't you know he he wouldn't just take what i would say and i loved it and i want it i want it like oh just because you're the teacher it doesn't mean you're right and you we had you oh you yeah know. we had <laughs> debates and, and we had debates you know and, yeah. and, and and you know and i would say you're right lorenzo don't don't just mm-hmm. take my word for it you're right. But here, here's some articles. I think it was an, a debate around vaccines. He was yeah. really interested and passionate about vaccines. And so it was a lot like, well, here's some articles. What do you think about this? Well, just, okay, I, I think I need to, you know, study a little more science because it just doesn't mm. make sense. Injecting the virus, wouldn't that get you sick? You know, he was he was very kind of aware and just, not just because you tell me yeah. right. it, it's good or whatever, that, 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 that necessarily means. And that's, you know, that's sometimes what, 
in education we tend to quell. Right, right? That, that critical yeah. thinking that aspect. Critical right? yeah. thinking aspect, and maybe because we don't agree with what they're saying or whatever, we we quell it rather than letting the student arrive there through that process. Yes. Yeah. And, and he, you know, he, I, I wanted to, I wanted him to keep going through that questioning process because that's some, you know, often education devolves into, you know, uh, talking, you listen. And, right. And, and, right. And that questioning, the back and forth debate is, is, is what he, he enjoyed. He enjoyed I love it. That. We, we had some good. Some of the debates, if people pop in their heads, they're like, are you guys fighting? <laughs> like, no, we're having, this is funny. We're laughing. Yeah. Right, right. We're having a great argument, you know. Yeah, you're, you're learning from him as just as much as he's learning from exactly, you. Exactly, exactly. It was really good. It was really good. And that's that's the life. That's what I remember yeah. from Lorenzo. Well, we thank you guys so yes. much, both of you. I, I loved hearing your approach to just like getting to learn the students before you try to teach them and pummel a bunch of yeah. information into their heads. Yeah. That's a new approach as well that I think uh, the broader education system can learn from because yeah. a lot of the times yeah. it's not built into the format of just let me understand who's in my classroom right now mm -hmm. so I can know a better approach to them and you know I can break through that wall mm -hmm. and that barrier that sometimes is put up mm -hmm. so thank you guys both for giving us some insight yes, I, I wish i had thank teachers you. like y'all growing up <laughs> so. yes. well, thank you agreed marcus <laughs> thank you guys so much for giving us some insight into lorenzo i think it's so important for our audience to understand and to learn and to know because again we're we're, we're talking about the beginning right so a lot of Absolutely. chatter we just thank you guys so much for letting us know how special he was to yeah. both of you yeah let, thank you for letting us share well um, Absolutely. About him. Absolutely. You guys stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm a young black man doing all that I can to stay. Oh, but when I look around and I see what's being done to my kind. Every day, I'm being hard to this prey. My people don't want no trouble. We've had enough struggle. I just want to live. God protect me. I just want to live. I just want to live. Welcome back to the Morning Update Show. I'm your host, Trey Holiday. Joining me today, the incomparable Marcus Green from South Seattle Emerald. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just want to say, I know we have only a little bit of time, but today's episode being so reflective, you know, we see tragedy and the positivity that comes from it, right? The tragedy is nuance and complexity and multidimensionality, and that's what Lorenzo was being given today on the show. And I mean, and that's why shows like this are so, so important, right? I mean, because everywhere else he's reduced to, you know, two sentences in a, you know, a quick, you know, blog post or something on, I, I don't want to name any news yeah, media, yeah, yeah, but yeah. You, you know who they are. Right, <laughs> right. And then that's it, right? Right. Not given, his family isn't given the time to really speak to the all aspects, holistic aspects of his life. And right. It, being able to humanize him today is, it's, you know, as somebody who, uh, you know, who's my, my mother, you know, was texting me in, in between the, the breaks and everything and like, you know, thank you for what you all is doing for this young man. So, yes. Yeah. You know what? That really is what it's about. I think that uh, our executive producer, Omari Salisbury, says it well all the time that, you know, we understand a lot of larger media outlets, they're restricted, right? I mean, they have these 30 minute shows or they only right. can, you know, whittle their stories down to, you know, two minutes, a minute and a half, you know? So for them, they're trying to get, you know, the pieces that they think people are gonna wanna know. And sometimes in that trying, they miss some things that are very, very important. And I think right. that independent media like South Seattle Emerald, like right here at Converge Media, it really is important to have these kinds of institutions and allow them to thrive because they do have that time right. to dive into community. Well, and I will say, even in the time that is given on some of those larger institutions, they still habitually reduce people down to a stereotype or an yes. archetype or it's, oh, uh, he was, 
he was black, so he must be a game banger yeah. or a thug or what have you. It's never, you know, it's never anything like he was just a, a human being caught up in something and, and, and fate intervened and it was a, a horrible, unfortunate incident. Right. And we never get that benefit of the doubt. No, we, we talk about it often, too, the sensationalism of news. Mm -hmm. um, what sells, right? right. Um, and even, you know, when you're thinking about views, that, that sometimes will skew your message. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And so I think it's really important. Independent media does it well to, like, let's not be focused on the views that we're going to get from right. the, you know, radical headline. But let's really focus on the story. Let's focus on the facts. And that builds up a channel as well. Um, you yes. know, so I'm just loving that you're on here. <laughs> because you know what I'm saying, you're doing it already, and you know, Omar. Sis, I'm glad that you have me today. Yes, this is, this come is dope. On, man. This, this is, dope. is amazing. <laughs> I mean, I, I, absolutely. As soon as Omari said that, you know, we're partnering, I thought amazing because that's really what you want, and yeah. we want to showcase people that there is community here. Yes, and we uh, we actually are telling the stories of community. And I just want to holler at at you all too, and just say, I mean, just thank you so much for this little convergence of media yes. here. Fun. With the <laughs> with with the Emerald, with Converge Media, with so many other you know organizations that are, that are partnering together, I think you know back in the day, I remember being you know the 80s, 90s, you would see you know news outlets, smaller news outlets, sort yeah. of having their own fiefdoms, and it's like, man, we are all in this boat together. You That's know? right. Y'all is doing this, we're, we're doing this. Let's amplify what we're doing and come together. So. I love that, you guys. We definitely don't want to leave here without letting you guys know the family of Lorenzo does have a GoFundMe. Um, so please, there are several, but we have. The actual link, yes. DQ, you're putting the link up for their GoFundMe? Uh, okay, it's in the description box. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so please, you guys can actually find that link in our description. Please donate to this family as they're pulling together uh, yes. what is needed to make sure that Lorenzo is resting in peace. Absolutely. Yes. And also just a note that as today shows, black media matters. So if yes. you can... Support it with your green dollars yes. <laughs> as often as you can as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And you guys can definitely donate um, on our website at whereweconverge.com. We thank all of you guys for watching and supporting these efforts. Again, as Marcus said, support independent black media. It's definitely needed. We want to keep telling the stories out here on the streets. We thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. We'll be back tomorrow at 11. Peace. Every voice and sing, till earth in heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing. dark past has taught us sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the rising Oh!